So uh, we invent new technology and then we use it to reinvent ourselves. Uh, I'm, I love that statement. Unfortunately, it was not me who said it. <laughs> it's by a professor and a futurist at Stanford, Mr. Pan, uh, Paul Sappho. Uh, but I think it's, it's very good. It's always been the case since the beginning of, of mankind, until today at least. Uh, from the first fire uh, through the industrial economy that was driven by the new production technology, through the consumer uh, industry driven by the marketing and sales technology, and today at the brink of the digital economy, which I believe to a great extent will be driven by big data. So I, I, there is one overarching uh, challenge, I think, for business overall uh, across our society, so that's not only telco. Uh, if we're looking at uh, the Fortune 500 companies over the last uh, uh, 50, 60 years, in the 1950s, the lifetime of a uh, Fortune 500 com company was around 75 years. And today that number is down to 15 and continuing to decline. And out of the Fortune 500 companies in the 1950s, 66 are still there. So uh, there is definitely a challenge to keep up with, with industry trends and, and business overall uh, for telco, but across industries. Uh, that's a challenge, but it's also an opportunity, of course. Um, in the telco space, there is also massive M&A transaction volumes forecasted uh, around $1 trillion until the year of 2020, uh, indicating that there is quite some modules going, going to come up. Um, in terms of challenges, uh, I would say that one overarching challenge uh, that we also have been discussing this morning uh, is around people, culture and organizations. Uh, so there is a lot of change that needs to be adapted by the human being. Uh, there is new competences that needs to be brought on, on board into uh, existing organizations. Uh, and we're also seeing executive roles starting to, to move and change. So CFOs working very closely with CIOs and across uh, the business uh, overall. Then there is a focus on, on business profitability overall. So making sure that when we're taking on those massive investments that we talked about before, 5G, IoT, uh, SDN and NFV, making sure that whatever investments we do, we do them wisely and we do them with a good knowledge on the ROI and the margin targets with capabilities to be able to come back and follow up on that. Um, I also uh, read a study from Ovum actually the other day where they um, asked a question across CIOs globally what they see as the upcoming challenge for the next 12 to 18 months. Uh, and 70% came back and stated um, uh, digital operations, uh, transformation, cloud delivery model, and big data analytics and integration to business processes. Um, finally, um, new data monetization for sure is an area of, of focus and challenge uh, today. Telcos trying to to see what to do with the data and what role to take. Uh, do you sell the data that you have? Do you become a data broker on your own? Do you mash up the data that you have with external data and expand and create value on top of that? Uh, finally, big data overall. Uh, some of us are talking about the, the dark data and, and that's also a problem today. There is a lot of investments and time um, money investments and time done in order to, to gather all this data. Um, but much of that data is actually still not used. It's sitting in the data lakes or the data swamps uh, for various reasons. Uh, there is maybe no trust in the data. The data is all, all, all only partial. Um, the data is just too complex, it's too big. Um, so that's some of the big data challenges that we're still facing today. So big data can really be a paradigm shift for telco profitability, but it will require a couple of things. Um, I mean, why are we where we are today? There is a reason for the numbers that I just uh, presented. So the data today is that we're looking at is primarily finance data, and even that data is sitting across different silos and it's aggregated and sampled data, uh, which doesn't really facilitate the task. 
So if we were to connect all those data sources and, and add a more real-time uh, non-aggregated aspect to the data, and then we add the, the rest of the data that are sitting in the Telco universe today, so across uh, network assets, across customers, services, channels and partners, then suddenly you have that right insight in order to take the right decisions. Uh, and that will require big data, but that data also needs to be raw, non-aggregated data down to the bits and bytes and, and real-time data. And, and also talking about real time, so the need for speed uh, is really here today. And it's not only uh, here in, in the aspect of it's time to get control of, over your business and your profitability, but it's also on the, the, the data platform in itself. Uh, there will be uh, a strong requirement for real time, so faster decision making, faster anal analysis, and by that, uh, the access to much, much faster uh, data in the long run in order to use this to uh, predict um, and optimize, uh, use machine learning and integrate into your business pro uh, processes for automation. Yeah, so at SAP, we're utilizing the latest state of the art big data technology uh, and top notch data science uh, expertise in order to construct a, a big data approach for Telco. And that includes both the, the platform uh, data management piece of uh, that approach, but also building analytical insights uh, on top of that data. Uh, and we recently after the summer just released uh, a new product called SAP Big Data Margin Assurance. Uh, and that solution takes care of uh, some of the, the problems that we were discussing before. So customers today are sitting on isolated data sources with no visibility across their business. We take care of that. Uh, they're sitting on stale uh, data access to aggregated and sampled data with no real uh, drill down exploration down to the bits and bytes. We take care of that too. Um, advanced analytics today is in many cases quite um, ISIT focused, so requiring uh, a lot of configuration and, and programmation. Uh, we take care of that too, providing more of a product uh, approach to big data analysis. And finally, cost today is not really part of uh, the equation, but that is something we take care of as well. So we help telcos to move from a RPU to new margin-based business models. Um, and for this, of course, we're using SAP HANA. Uh, that is providing for a real-time data management access of massive, massive amounts of data, uh, so massive scale. Um, and we're also, uh, we have also developed a new uh, data model for Telco, specifically adapted for Telco big data uh, and fast data analytics. And it's based on TM Forum SID, but also uh, TM Forum ABDR. And I also, it's worth also to po point out that this um, solution has been created in close co-innovation uh, with Vodafone. Like I said in the beginning, big data is very much a, a, a journey. Uh, and we have been walking this journey for SAP Big Data Modern Assurance uh, very close um, and together with Vodafone. Yes, absolutely. I would be happy to. So, um, I was thinking to show you uh, our outlier detection functionality as part of Big Data Margin Assurance. Um, so coming in from the, the front screen, you can go in and you can select your, your base set. And here you have a couple of choices. You can select product segment, customer type, uh, product offering, regions, and detection period. Um, after that, you will already get the first overview uh, of how your uh, profit, margin, revenue, and costing is looking like. Uh, after that, I will go in and select my peer group for this analysis. In this case, I select to look at product offering. And also here, I start to get a first sense of uh, how I'm doing in terms of negative and positive numbers. I then uh, go in and do my further analysis. I select my analysis 
uh, method. So I select bottom interquartile uh, and I do my outlier detection uh, run. And this is where I'm crunching uh, millions and millions of uh, subscriptions and gigabytes of data. Um, and I come up with 10,000 outliers in total. And I see that my product offering Smart International is providing me with some 882 uh, numbers of outliers. Uh, I can already here start to look and I see that uh, this service is generating quite some good revenue, so $260 uh, dollars versus the average revenue across all services of 292 so that's not too bad. But the profit is really bad, so we're negative with minus 459. And I start to see that there might be some problems with my direct costs. Uh, I can then uh, dig down further and I can actually go down on individual subscriber level and I see that I have a subscriber with a negative uh, minus $1,000 of profit and that looks very strange. Um, I can go in and further analyze that customer versus the peer set and the base set. In this case I see that there is uh, some uh, strange profile here on voice and messaging and the direct cost versus the other um, data sets. So then I go back and I also want to go in, I can go in and look at, at different properties. Uh, in this case I can corporate channels, loyalty status, uh, customer types uh, and more data on the customer side. Here uh, I choose to continue to look at the different services, service providers. Uh, and I start to see that I do have some strange outliers here linked to voice roaming in Canada. And I also have something similar on the messaging side for that same provider. And when I go back to my individual user uh, that were giving me some quite bad uh, margin results, when I go down I also see that in fact yes, I do have uh, that customer using and the voice and roaming in Canada and Mexico. And then I can continue to click down on more uh, detailed information uh, in the data set as well. But for the purpose of time, I will stop here.